Hi everyone, this is Lord coming at you from the Break Zone with another deck tech video. This one going over a title series deck that features Final Fantasy V that was piloted by Colin Coughlin in order to win a RVA title series weekly. Okay, name of the deck is Arthur's Sister, Homer's Son, and Mom's Spaghetti. All right, I know Mom's Spaghetti is referring to the art on uh, the newest Gilgamesh, number seven. Uh, Homer's Son would probably be Let's say this parts, because <laughs> Homer Simpson has a son named Bart. Arthur's sister, not so sure what that refers to, but hey, you know what? Um, maybe uh, maybe Colin will be able to explain it in the comments below. I did have a quick a quick couple of questions that I had Colin answer in order to go a little more in depth for this deck, and let's go over some of his answers. All right, so the inspiration for this deck was that. Uh, he played five title and a title tournament in the past. Oops, all forward for Strongest Sword Gilgamesh. It was fun, but was inconsistent due to the fact that he had to put in standard units into the deck. But with Opus 7 coming out and seeing 5 get second at another title tournament, he decided to play it again with the new cards. And uh, some of the good cool plays would be ab was uh, being able to Bart's special three times uh, even though it was only in one out of like 20 games. But the primary openers were Kelger from Opus 7 into Kelger from Opus 3, allowing him to play as a Zot. Uh, the deck also gains a lot from playing Ferris in order to uh, to fuel Strongest Sword or Kelger special. So with Ferris, let me uh, pull up the card for you. With Ferris, you'll be able to look at the top 5 cards of your deck and pick out a category 5 character from among them, put them in your hands. So whenever you need a special, go ahead, play Ferris, and you'll be hopefully be able to find one of the many copies of your characters in order to fuel those specials. All right, let's go over some of the deck. And as you can see, it's mostly forwards. You have a very high chance of uh, hitting a forward if you ever use the strongest sword special ability. Uh, the reason why it's been mentioned so much is, as you can look at the card, uh, you can straight break a forward as a special. So, uh, if you have Gilgamesh in play and you attack with it, since it has Brave, after declaring uh, Gilgamesh as an attacker, uh, go ahead, use a special that requires him to dole, and hit your Gilgamesh, break a forward, the attack goes through, you deal damage, and maybe your other forwards come in for uh, some more damage afterwards too. It's a great card, 4 CP AK. Um, I, I personally, I love this card. I've played decks with this card in there. Uh, it's fallen out of favor, obviously, in Constructed. But in title series, I am so happy to see it back at the top. Okay. Alright, this Gilgamesh is mostly used as special fodder. Uh, keep in mind that this deck has zero backup. So if you ever see anything with an odd cost CP, you have to pay one more CP in order to play it out. So this would be a 4 CP 7k. The special is really nice if you're able to pull it off, but uh, the special from the other Gilgamesh is clear. Is, is actually quite nice in my opinion. I like it all. I like the strongest sword the most out of all of them. And uh, also, if you play this special, you open yourself up to a lot of removal. Where while well, title series might have a little bit less removal at times, but if you have to pitch uh, one card for two lightning CP for the special. One Gilgamesh for the special as well, and they remove this Gilgamesh, you've lost three cards in the exchange, which could put you down far or like far so far behind that it would be very difficult for you to catch up. So be very weary when playing out this Gilgamesh. Alright, next up job is Bart's. Keep in mind Bart's only has all the jobs when he's on the field. At any other time, he is just a wanderer. So uh, no Kelger cheating in a Bart's. That's not gonna work. But this Bart works really well with another Bart's I'll go over in just a little bit. Okay. Uh, Zazat, 5 CP. So normally you want to cheat this in with one of the Kelgers. Otherwise, uh, the only other ice card that you have is actually another copy of Zazat. Just this specific copy of Zazat. There's three of them. That's the only other way you're gonna play it out if not for Kelger. But uh, when he's on the field with another Dawn Warrior such as Galoof of Kelger or Dorgan uh, having a first strike brave 9000 power forward is huge okay uh, next up we've got Dorgan who's a form of removal that gets around any of the fours that can't be broken 
because the rule for the, the, rule for the game is slightly different. Alright, Bart's. If you get five jobs from this Bart's with the other copy of Bart's, it's uh, something that people that looked at title series thought about like since, well, this Bart's came out or title series was announced because, hey, guess what? Uh, having a 9,000 power forward with first strike, brave, haste that can attack twice a turn is a quite quite a big deal. Okay, next up we have Gilgamesh. This one's a toolbox. Uh, not so bad, but keep in mind it's going to be really hard for you to use all those other abilities efficiently. You will be required to pitch cards for it because, as I mentioned a couple times already, you have no backups. Alright, uh, this Calgary allowing you to play other Dawn Warriors from your hand onto the field is quite interesting. Uh, keep in mind, since this title series, you can play this Kelger into the other Kelger. I mean, obviously not um, the Lightning Kelger from Opus 3 into himself, but being able to play uh, the Opus 3 Kelger into Opus 7 Kelger, I mean, that would be pretty nuts. Alright, Fabian Gogo is uh, the only target for your Lena, and uh, be very careful about. Uh, how you play it out, don't let Gogo be the only forward on the field. If you have, if your opponent has no forwards, uh, playing Lena into Gogo is something you probably have to think twice about. Okay, Lena being able to well, buff a Ferris, because Ferris has an effect when Lena's on the field, but also being able to uh, arise one of your uh, forwards from the break zone would be quite nice. Keep in mind that you have a limited amount of uh, or water uh, forwards, or, or I mean, uh, yes, water forwards, water characters to pitch to Lena. I mean, some of them would be like, well, Sildra, Ferris, Lena herself, or Gogo, obviously. But Arise is not going to come up too often, but if it does, you can pull off some pretty big shenanigans with, I mean, as I mentioned before, Calgary into Calgary into another Dawn Warrior would be one way to fill out a board. All right, Opus 7 Calgary is freaking amazing in this deck being able to just straight up play a dun warrior from the top of your deck onto the field and you reveal the top five you're very likely to hit one if not two of them at that point you get to pick out which one you want and as i mentioned with lena being able to play a calgar into another calgar into another dun warrior is just nuts all right bart so well the end of the field ability is not going to be so... Well, actually, it is going to be useful in order to... It's characters that are going to re reactivate. I thought it was Bacchus for a second. I almost forgot. But with so many Bards in your deck, every once in a while, you'll be able to play the... Uh, to get the nuts where you you play it out and you pitch three more Bards afterwards, which is just completely insane, by the way. Uh, having... What was it? Uh, is it a 10,000 power forward at that point? Yes. 10,000 power... First Strike, Haste, Brave, that can attack three times this turn and dealt 5,000 damage to a different forward. I mean, that's, that's completely game-breaking if you pull it off, in my opinion. Unless, obviously, they, uh, they, they have some kind of removal, which is just going to make you really sad. All right. Uh, Galoof. So, as mentioned before, uh, actually, uh, I'll go over some of the possible deck changes later on. Uh, Galoof is great, not being able to be broken during your turn is awesome, but also uh, being able to force your opponent to block and sometimes in title series there are certain key forwards on the field that you have to worry about and uh, Galoof being able to just go in there and uh, force them to uh, to go against him and hey guess what, he's going to be darn hard to take out because unless you remove him from the game or uh, put him in the break zone somehow where, I don't know, you somehow lower his power to one thousand to zero or lower, which at 9,000 power, that's kind of difficult. And uh, you do have, uh, let's see, that's you only have two copies of this Galoof, so the special is not going to come in that often, especially if you've been wiping your opponent's board with stronger sword hits after well, one after the other. Uh, next up, we've got Dazat. So, uh, with a couple of uh, Earth forwards in this deck, you might be able to pull off the first one. Otherwise, the other abilities aren't going to come up, uh, aren't going to be drained that often. 
uh, keep in mind that, well, he uh, he definitely can be a 10,000 power forward, but I don't think that's the one you want to see most often. The others is not entering the field would be great. This one's not too bad to play out if you need to. But um, as Colin will mention uh, mentioned, uh, later on with uh, some of the questions that I had, uh, this one was mostly fodder in order for Gerloof to uh, be able to pull off his abilities. Okay. Next up, we've got Spaghetti Gil Gilgamesh from Opus 7. Um, you have a lot of Gilgamesh in this deck, and uh, eventually some of, them, some of them are gonna hit the break zone, and getting to uh, 10,000 power is not impossible. And go from one Gilgamesh to the next, if you play this one out, and they allow you to tutor pretty much for the stronger sword Gilgamesh, and you have more Gilgamesh in your hand, or or you you know for a fact that you will draw into more Gilgameshes because you have two, three. You have like 12 Gilgamesh, let me think. Yeah, I think it's 12. 12, you have 12 Gilgameshes in this deck. So there's a very high chance you'll be able to uh, go into the different Gilgamesh that you need uh, if this one was ever broken. All right, next up we've got Halicarnassus. Begin to being able to blank out all the abilities of your opponent. In title series, I think that's a big deal. A lot of times the boards go a little bit too wide. Things get crazy. There's too many interactions from one four to the next. Halicarnassus is going to be able to just straight blank that out. Uh, don't expect that uh, that second ability, the activated ability, to come up too often as you only have two summons in your deck. So being able to choose a forward and break it is only, happen is only going to happen if you have two summoners in hand and you, you're not about to use them. Okay. Last but not least, we got Ferris. Being able to uh, search out your deck uh, in order to play out the special that you need or maybe get a Kelger so that you can start your combos off is going to be awesome. And Lena works with her, obviously, so it's, it's a good deal. And last but not least, we've got uh, Sildra. Being able to clear the way for all your forwards. I mean, when you're flooding the board with a bunch of Dawn Warriors, Bards, and Gilgamesh. Uh, Sildress, definitely going to be a game ender. All right, and uh, a little bit of closing words from uh, the from Colin as well. Some of the possible changes we would make to the deck. So, overperforming cards. Kelger, <laughs> Opus 7, uh, as well as Opus 3, as well as Gilgamesh from Opus 7. So that's awesome to hear that uh, Opus 7 has opened up this deck in so many ways. Some of the under for underwhelming cards were Lena, Fate Baby Gogo, and uh, Opus 7 Zazat, which was just fodder for Galoof's ability, really. All right, so some of the possible changes in the deck would be uh, adding one Sildra, uh, one Zazat, so you could use it more for Galoof, uh, as well as uh, removing one Fate Baby Gogo and one Lena. Because it looks like uh, that Fabian with Google Lena play did not work out as well as he expected. All right. And previously, he wanted to make the five title more like a normal deck uh, to be able to use X Death from Opus 7 and more of the standard unit backups and Guido. But uh, he thought competitively, oops, all forward keeps the pace pretty well with others and makes other players have to match your pace. So kind of like Turbo Discard, where people had to match your pace. When you put in too much aggression, eventually they had to play it forward, or otherwise you're going to race them out and they might not be able to catch up, especially a strongest sword, where turn after turn, if they play out a forward, you can straight remove it. That's always really great. Hopefully you like this uh, little deck tech, and maybe you give a title series a shot. If not, I definitely advise you to do so. So at the uh, Breakzone Championship that happened a couple weeks ago uh, that uh, Jared uh, Scott Walters was overseeing. He, uh, uh, we, we did a little bit of a fun side tournament where we had uh, teams of three that were kind of picked out by the TO, uh, Jared in this case, where uh, people went in teams, played title series, played against each other, and people had a blast. If you have not given title series a shot, please do so. It is so freaking amazing, especially when you're able to uh, showcase all the cards that you like from a certain uh, category whether it is six but in this case five uh, we've seen a lot of different ones out there as well as chris adams uh, one of his uh, decks that we showcased uh, 
a couple of videos ago uh, where it was a uh, Final Fantasy 12 with all the Sky Pirates. It was a good time. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, big shout out to our to our sponsor, Match Tech Games, where uh, they actually have a buy list right now. So uh, that's been updated recently. If you're looking to offload some of the cards that you have, maybe some, some foils so that you could get some um, non-foils out of it. Uh, you can definitely get a lot of value there. Otherwise, we're still running a bit of a giveaway when we hit 800 subscribers. Uh, somebody was going to be picked out at random and they will get to pick to choose between some of the things uh, that uh, our sponsor, MatchTechGames.com, has uh, offered up to us. So uh, you get to pick between uh, Mox Amber from Dominaria, uh, Horizon Canopy from uh, Iconic Masters, Cactuar Cactus Sleeves, a pack of 60. Lightning Fleshy, she's still there for all of you that loves her. Light Sign is still here. Last but not least, Toronto Crystal Cup Deck Box, Shiva from Opus 3. Signed by Taro Kageyama, the producer of the game. So, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to add them down below. If you have any suggestions as to what we should cover, uh, go ahead and put in put it in the comments. Uh, I did get a I did reply to a comment recently about uh, I think we did a, a news video where somebody asked, "Hey, how come you're covering so much of the RVA guys?" Well, they're one of the few people that put out their uh, deck uh, the the deck list up on uh, FF decks, so I'm able to look it over. Uh, I'll I'll try to do a bit more thorough of a job to look over some of the other decks if I make any more uh, news videos to keep people up to date and to anybody out there near the RVA guys they're, they're gonna have they're gonna be um, uh, live streaming the Supernova Cup that's gonna be coming out this weekend uh, I went over it during uh, in the news video that I did recently so hopefully you go you go and check it out this weekend uh, they're like they're gonna be live streaming whenever I can I'm gonna be tuning in uh, blowing up the chat because uh, they're always a good time. They're a blast to watch and listen to. And only that, hey, we're starving for content right now. Uh, the comp competitive season is a, a bit of, of a on a a bit of on a hold status at this point because Worlds is coming up in uh, just a bit over a week. Looking forward to that. Some of the, t the details came out recently. And uh, well, I'm going to be cheering for Team USA, but I look forward to seeing some really tough competition coming out from throughout the globe from um, from Europe. I mean, we've got Toby, that's still the, the reigning champion returning, as well as uh, a lot of the people from Europe, from, uh, well, Alex Hancock to uh, Jimmy Faulkner, as well as people from Asia or Australia. Uh, I look forward to watching all those games. Hopefully you do so as well. And... Um, you know what? Uh, we'll catch you next time. And if you have any questions or comments, as I mentioned before, please put them down below and we'll try to address them the best way we can. And so on that note, catch you next time.